What's up, Sportable community? This is Kyle and your girl Harriet. We are hanging out at home, um, trying to stay active as much as possible. So uh, one thing that this video is focusing on is just kind of items you might have hanging out around your house that you can use to either supplement your exercises that you're currently doing or stay active or get active. Uh, I know not everyone has access to dumbbells and barbells and TheraBands and all that other jazz that you might see in the gym. So we want to make sure that we're able to help you out as much as possible during this time. Um, if you have any questions about what's being used or how you can use it at home, hit us in the comments with it. Uh, also, blanket statement, if you don't have one of these items, it's not hanging out at your house, don't go out and get it. You know, there's no real reason for that. Uh, if you need some, some additional guidance, you know, hit me up in the emails, uh, kyle at sportable.org or Everyone should have more or less access to my cell phone. Feel free to call me, text me. Uh, happy to help out. Here it is too. So without further ado, let's get to some of our items. So a couple things. Um, I don't have a lot of gym equipment, so I use a lot of the stuff that we have around uh, just to supplement my exercises. You can do a lot of body weight stuff. Um, you can do a lot with just a minimal amount of, um, of things lying around the house. So for some examples, um, dumbbells i have a set of tens that's it there's no others i don't have any uh barbells or you know i have a couple plates but they're not really useful for anything so one way that i supplement my exercises especially for unilateral movements or dumbbell movements um, is to use something like a container of bleach which is between two and five pounds uh it's a little bit difficult to hold on to but for purposes being uh, for those exercises this can work really well it does have a little instability to it there is a liquid inside uh, this is unopened bleach container right now um, you can use something like this you can use a laundry detergent um, container be mindful that the caps are on um, and you can fill these with whatever substance you really want to as far as it goes uh, it could be dirt it could be mulch it could be water um, but whatever you tend to use is going to affect how much weight is actually in the container itself, how difficult it ends up being. Uh, you know, if you were to fill one of these with concrete, it's going to be obviously a lot heavier than if you were just to fill it with water. So be mindful. You want to fill it to what you're able to do. And again, these can be used for any kind of isometric hold, uh, any kind of just typical reps scheme that you're doing. Uh, you might not think two to five pounds is really heavy, but after doing it for about 30 seconds, it can be really heavy, uh, especially if you're holding an static hold on the other side, the same movement. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of like exercising and like how that looks and how you can put those together when we do our live stream on Wednesday. These are just some typical items that you might want to look for around the house. I know a lot of people have uh, TheraBands. So I'm leaning over here. I'm trying to keep everything relatively close so I can just go through it. So TheraBands, if you have them, they're great, wonderful items. Um, if you don't totally understand, the biggest thing with like using TheraBands is to actually make sure you're engaging the muscle group that you're targeting. So you, when we're going through like rear delts, so the back of your shoulder, you're making sure that you're actually engaging those shoulder blades, pulling it tight and coming back forward. Um, Again, we'll go through some exercises and whatnot on Wednesday. I just want to give you guys an idea. So TheraBands, you probably have one of these from your physical therapist uh, or your OT. Just depends on if you've been going recently or not. If you don't have a TheraBand, you may have a resistance band with the handles. Um, same idea. You can do the same movements that you can do with a TheraBand. A little bit more cautionary with these guys. Uh, keep in mind, you want to check these tubes to make sure that there's no dry rotting or it's not starting to rip the biggest thing with these is when they pop they snap back and hit you and it hurts really bad um so be mindful if you have one great if you don't no problem if you got a theraband great if you don't no problem one thing everyone probably has that they never thought to use for is under armor or a um kind of like one of those dry fit blends that's a compression so these have some elasticity to them right so what you're trying to do is replicate that movement but really targeting again the muscle group that you're using to do the movement it's not going to be as hard as a theraband it's not going to be as hard as a resistance band 
but it is gonna give you some resistance uh, as far as what the material is. Um, again, there's a little bit of elasticity to it. So you can see, like I can't pull it all the way tight like I could with the TheraBand. I can loosen up a little bit. I can get a little bit more from it. Um, it's not gonna be super challenging coming back forward, but the idea is it's still giving me that range of motion benefit from going from here to back and being able to tighten up with my shoulder blades and pull with my rear delts, giving myself some nice straight posture, sitting nice and tall with it and coming back forward. Um, hopefully most of us have some kind of uh, elastic band that we've been given through physical therapy. But again, these compression shirts can be used for that. Um, now understand that again, they just don't have the same as, uh, elasticity, but for something that you're working on like through at least a shoulder range of motion, they're totally fine to use. Uh, if it gets to something that's a little bit more complicated than that, probably not the best idea, but you do have that option. Um, so I know a lot of people that don't have resistance bands when I was a trainer would say like, I don't have anything at home to use. Yes, you do. You can still use this. Or instead of even using any, the shirt itself, you can go through the range of motion just with your, just with your, uh, your upper body. So again, pulling shoulders tight, sitting nice and tall, coming back forward. It's a workout if you actually target the muscle to do the movement. So don't think just because you don't have this equipment that you can't do that uh, particular movement. Um, and again, when we do the class on Wednesday, we're gonna go through a lot of stuff where we don't use anything. Uh, so it'll be really good. Again, and lastly, throw in the comments if you have a question about um, using a certain type of material for this, just let me know. Happy to, happy to give you some feedback uh, and we'll go on to our next item. All right, so one thing that's super helpful, um, if you have it, a lot of people don't, so just wanna start off with that is uh, PVC. So PVC, if you have any like just random pieces lying around that you're able to cap off, a really cool way to work out is to fill these with water or sand. Uh, and what it does is it creates what we call a slosh pipe. Um, and it makes it so that whatever movement you're doing, you're fighting the movement of the water or the sand throughout the PVC pipe. Uh, it's super difficult. It's a lot of fun as far as exercising goes at home. Um, it definitely will challenge you uh, beyond the movement. So if you're doing like overhead press and you have water tipping you, now you're using your core to keep yourself upright and you're holding it as high as you can uh, in that range of motion while maintaining a strong core and coming through that movement, pushing up. You can do the same thing with curls. You can do the same thing if you're able to lay on the ground and do a push press with it and you'll fight that, uh, that water resistance and where it's going. It's really cool to do it. Again, not an item that a lot of people have at home, but I know some of us probably have some PVC lying around down in our basement that we'd be able to cap off. Great item to use. Another thing that we have probably lying around the house that can be used, uh, this is more of like an Olympic lift style stretch is if you have any piping or even like a broom handle, so I use this to actually mix up concrete, but if you have a broom handle or any kind of like just long pipes lying around the house that you're able to do stretches with, great thing is to actually open up that chest, open up that back, going through those motions and you can do a rep count. It ends up being an exercise. It's not super easy uh, the more you do it. So going through that movement, really reaching up, holding it nice and tight, bringing it back down. Uh, same thing with the broom handle. Broom handle is the same idea. Um, the farther out you go, the farther back you can go. The biggest thing is make sure that wrist is staying neutral. So neutral wrist is here. It's not flexed back. It's not flexed forward. It's neutral. So you're keeping it neutral the entire time. If you start to feel your wrist flex, like you're revving a motorcycle or something like that, you probably are going beyond where your range of motion is. Now you're forcing yourself into a movement pattern. Keep your wrist neutral the entire time as best you can. Um, so when we go back, nice and neutral, go back to where I can, and then back forward. When I bring it forward, it's normally to about chest height. You can come all the way down to your lap and relax for a second and then do it again. Uh, those of you that took the class with me maybe two summers ago, remember that we used this movement to simulate uh, burpees from, a, from those that were using a chair. So if you're in a chair, you have a little bit of weight to that, to that uh, the item that you're using, you're going up and back down, up and back down, up and back down. So think about doing it for a little bit. 
it's gonna be tiring um, but yeah no it's a great item I use it a lot definitely helps with stretching uh, can use it to do a cardio workout um, so just you know be creative with it another really great item that you probably have around the house or some form of it, it doesn't have to be what I'm gonna show you, is a bag of mulch. Um, or you might have a bag of dirt, or you might just have like a bag of leaves, or or whatever. A um, Couple really cool things you can do with mulch. a bag of mulch is like, you already know how much it weighs. Uh, most bags are about 40 pounds. So if you empty it to halfway, you have a 20 pound bag. Um, doing different style carries with it, doing, um, upright rows so grabbing that bag pulling it up bringing it down pulling it up bringing it down um, there's just a lot you can do with that you can also get into a little bit more of a power movement where you are using it kind of like a slam ball or a big medicine ball um, what I will say is that if you want to create that pretty easy to do you take a uh, one of your thicker uh, garden bags or leave bags or or what have you and you wrap said mulch bag in it or dirt bag or whatever you want to keep it in the bag that it originally came in gives you a little bit more substance um, and then you want to tape it into kind of like whatever uh, form you want so what that ends up being is a really great tool to use for slamming power movement chest um, this is another kind of um, out of the ordinary movement, I think most people would say. Uh, it's, it's um, I forget what they actually call the equipment, but basically it's a sledgehammer or you can use any kind of garden variety tool uh, that has a flat head uh, or surface. Um, and really what you're doing is you're working on push pulls. So, uh, you use a cloth substance like this is just a, a hoodie of mine I find a hoodie works best because it'll close up on whatever the uh, material is or the tool is without having to like wrap it with duct tape so I typically will take it I'll put it through the hood so we have the sledgehammer we stick it through our hood here and then uh, you can do it on hardwood I've done it in the house uh, if you don't believe me I'll send you another video where I do this in the house where you are sitting nice and tall and you're working on pushing out as far as you can and then dragging it back across the su surface all the way in pushing out as far as you can and pulling it back in and you can do different movements too like you can do a mixing bowl and stuff like that like you would do in a pool where you're mixing the surface and while you, it's not um it's not a intrinsically hard movement um either the mixing bowl or the push and pull it's a lot of muscle focus so when you're pushing out you definitely are thinking about using your chest using your triceps to push away from you and then when you're dragging back you're really thinking about using your lats using those uh, rear delts using your biceps to pull it towards you as close as possible keeping those arms tucked in you don't need to flare out to pull um, and really just working on a push and pull push and pull push and pull not much to that um, again maybe not the hardest exercise you ever did but if you do it for 30 seconds you do it for a minute it's a lot more tiring than you would think you know, a lot of people have uh, therabands so I'm leaning over here I'm trying to keep everything relatively close so I can just go through it so therabands if you have them they're great wonderful items um, if you don't totally understand the biggest thing with like using TheraBands is to actually make sure you're engaging the muscle group that you're targeting. So you, when we're going through like rear delts, so the back of your shoulder, you're making sure that you're actually engaging those shoulder blades, pulling it tight and coming back forward. Um, again, we'll go through some exercises and whatnot on Wednesday. I just want to give you guys an idea. So TheraBands, you probably have one of these from your physical therapist. Uh, or your OT, just depends on if you've been going recently or not. If you don't have a TheraBand, you may have a resistance band with the handles. Um, same idea, you can do the same movements that you can do with a TheraBand. A little bit more cautionary with these guys. Uh, keep in mind, you wanna check these tubes to make sure that there's no dry rotting or it's not starting to rip. The biggest thing with these is when they pop, they snap back and hit you and it hurts really bad. Um, so 
be mindful. If you have one, great. If you don't, no problem. If you got a TheraBand, great. If you don't, no problem. One thing everyone probably has that they never thought to use for is Under Armour or a um, kind of like one of those dry fit blends that's a compression. So these have some elasticity to them, right? So what you're trying to do is replicate that movement, but really targeting, again, the muscle group that you're using to do the movement. It's not gonna be as hard as a TheraBand. It's not gonna be as hard as a resistance band, but it is gonna give you some resistance uh, as far as what the material is. Um, again, there's a little bit of elasticity to it. So you can see, like I can't pull it all the way tight like I could with the TheraBand. I can loosen up a little bit. I can get a little bit more from it. Um, it's not gonna be super challenging coming back forward, but the idea is it's still giving me that range of motion benefit from going from here to back and being able to tighten up with my shoulder blades and pull with my rear delts, giving myself some nice straight posture, sitting nice and tall with it and coming back forward. Um, hopefully most of us have some kind of uh, elastic band that we've been given through physical therapy. But again, these compression shirts can be used for that. Um, now understand that again, they just don't have the same as, uh, elasticity, but for something that you're working on, like through at least a shoulder range of motion, they're totally fine to use. Uh, if it gets to something that's a little bit more complicated than that, probably not the best idea, but you do have that option. Um, so I know a lot of people that don't have resistance bands when I was a trainer would say like, I don't have anything at home to use. Yes, you do. You can still use this. Or instead of even using any, the shirt itself, you can go through the range of motion just with your, just with your, uh, your upper body. So again, pulling shoulders tight, sitting nice and tall, coming back forward. It's a workout if you actually target the muscle to do the movement. So don't think just because you don't have this equipment that you can't do that uh, particular movement. Um, and again, when we do the class on Wednesday, we're gonna go through a lot of stuff where we don't use anything. Uh, so it'll be really good. Again, and lastly, throw in the comments if you have a question about um, using a certain type of material for this, just let me know. Happy to, happy to give you some feedback. Uh, and we'll go on to our next item. All right, this is another item that a lot of people most likely won't have lying around their house, but they might have some component to it. So it's, uh, it's kind of like a homemade kettlebell. Basically, if you have any uh, electrical uh, or plumbing pipes lying around the house that you can fix into an item like this, uh, what you can do is you can use it to supplement doing a kettlebell work workout. So you don't actually have to add any weight to it. Uh, it's mostly about going through that hinge movement. So if we're sitting and we're using it, we're going through hinge, pulling up, hinge, pulling up. Um, it's not something that's very likely that a lot of uh, a lot of people have at home. I'm just kind of weird, so I have it, but. Um, it is something that can definitely be beneficial. If you have any questions on how to make this from the stuff you have at home, not going to Lowe's, send me a picture of what you have and I will tell you how to assemble it. Um, but yeah, basically once it's all together, it looks like this. If you were to have any kind of weight plates lying around the house, it can drop and sit onto this and it won't come off while you're doing whatever workout it is. Could be curls, could be um, overhead press, could be chest press, could be a, a seated row could be kettlebell swings so um, that is something that you can use again not likely that a lot of us have it but send me some pictures I can tell you how to assemble it all right just to throw something else out for like all of our families out there um, there's a lot of ways to keep our young athletes active uh, I'm sure you guys are probably on Google which is finding all sorts of really cool stuff on YouTube, all that great stuff. Um, some things like take minimal to no equipment, uh, but you know, big focuses are like gross motor skills, imagination skills, manipulative skills. Um, and you can do it in like freeze games, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I just want to give like a one example that I have. So I used to teach a lot of, a, a lot of youth classes with the Y back in the day. Um, this is one really fun one. It's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to kind of hold it up to the camera. Hopefully it's visible. If it's not, hit me in the comments. I will type it out, uh, but it's really easy. Just a noodle hockey game. 
Um, you might not have noodles at home, might have to use something else. Uh, it's not gonna matter too much. The big thing is to get the kids moving, get them a little active, have some fun. Uh, it's really fun if you participate. I'm not gonna lie, they're really, like, it's a lot of fun. Um, and the, you know, I definitely use fun music. Just have a good time with it. I know most of our parents out there are probably having a great time as it is. Uh, if you need any suggestions or you want any other games that are kind of similar to this one, just let me know. Uh, I don't have a ton, but I do have a nice binder size full of just different imagination games, songs, freeze, uh, free song games, um, gross motor skills, and I think there's one other category that I have. But uh, it's just something to do that's a little bit different. So enjoy. Another way to just stay active at home. Uh, I do it by, you don't have to use tennis balls, but I have tennis balls for this. And basically I have a bag full. Um, I also have a lot of other stuff in this bag that's not really relevant to this, but in it will have an exercise and it will have how many reps I'm gonna do that exercise. So it's kind of like a, a grab bag of exercises, if you will. None of them are super fun because I just didn't make them fun. Uh, some of them you may or may not be able to do at home kind of thing. Like, you know, like these I made before um, I didn't have access to a gym. So this one says 10 tire flips. I don't have a tire lying around here, uh, fortunately, I guess. So I couldn't use this one. But since you're creating this at home, it can be anything that you could do uh, easily at your house. Uh, one way that I like to use these, I do actually filter through them to what I have lying around or what I'm able to do while I'm at home. And randomly on the hour, I'll pick one or two or three and that'll be my workout for that hour just to get me up and moving. Um, it's a really unique way just to not have to plan anything. You know, it's predetermined. This is what it is. Unlucky draw if you don't want to do or you don't like what it is. But it does keep you a little bit accountable because it's like, well, I mean, I grabbed it, so let's go do it. Uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, I do it every once in a while with like, you know, Marissa, we'll just pick one, go do it. 10 side lunges, great. Go do 10 side lunges. Uh, and that's it. You don't have to do multiple sets. You don't have to do any more than 10. Uh, if you're really feeling it, you can put it back in the bag and do it again later. Um, you know, I like to have about 20 to 30 of these that I can just go through. And as I finish them, I put them somewhere different in a different container. That way I don't repeat anything. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun way to do that. Hey guys, uh, so just again, this is a couple of items that you can use that you got lying around the house um, to either take place of or supplement the exercises that you're currently doing. You may not have some of them. Totally understandable. Don't go buy them. No worries. Don't need to... Uh, have a surplus of people buying sledgehammers, but all that to say, use what you have. If you have unique items that you use for your workouts at home um, that I didn't show off or Liz didn't show off or anyone else that's portable didn't have, uh, share with us. Always great to have better ideas out there. Um, a couple things, always go into your workout with a plan, uh, either like your set count that you're gonna do, your reps, the movements that you wanna do, are you gonna do it for time? What does that look like? Don't make shift it as you go. Uh, that's definitely going to detract from what you're trying to accomplish. Really focus. Um, you know, I have a hard time working out at home, like probably most people, I get really distracted really easily. Uh, so I use kind of like what I showed off, those tennis balls. You don't have to have those, uh, you can, Write down exercises on pieces of paper. That way it's easier for you just to refer to. Um, what I like to do is I like to set a timer. I'll do it every hour, on the hour, pick a couple, go do them, come back, do whatever I need to do. Timer starts over, have another hour, come on back, do the same thing. Um, it's just a really great way to keep things fresh and to keep you moving throughout the day. Um, another thing that you can use is if you wanna do exercise for time. So a couple of times I said like 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, uh, and you don't wanna watch a timer because it's hard to do a movement and watch a timer. If you don't have one already, download an app. Uh, one I recommend is called Gym Boss. Gym Boss. So it is super simple to use. 
you can put a rest period in, you can put a work period in. Typically, if I'm gonna work out at home and I'm doing a straight workout, I always do it for time. I always set it with Gym Boss. It's super easy. I know how long the entire workout's gonna be. I know the movements I'm gonna do because I've already pre-planned those and I just roll on into it. Um, that way, it's, it's just easier. You don't have to worry about anything. You can throw your music on. It'll override the music when it has to time, when the time runs out, give you a little beep noise, music comes back on, you move on to the next movement. Um, so definitely check it out if you don't have it. Uh, other than that, like, you'll notice that like we didn't talk a lot about movements that you could be doing with some of these items. We are gonna have our live stream on Wednesday. If you have specific uh, requests or thoughts or anything before that, please let me know, email me, phone call, hit me in the comments. Uh, I will work in as much as possible for that live stream. Um, you know, I don't normally work out but for 30 minutes for the live stream. We'll probably be on there for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, just so I can explain just the movements, why we're doing the movement, what the benefit is, then we're gonna do it. Uh, it might be a little slow to start, but it'll be really good overall. Uh, you know, we, we want to stay connected with our community out there during this time. So definitely, like, let us know what you want. Uh, happy to fit it in either way. Um, and, yeah, thanks for bearing with me. I'm not I'm not super cool with being on camera and stuff, but we're going to make it work. Uh, yeah, me and Harriet.